Welcome to the Tutorials of Model Day. My name is Conrad Cording, and I'm part of your tutorial team. The tutorials have largely been written by Matt Laporte, and we've received uh, considerable help from Byron Galbraith. And because this is the first day, I want to emphasize how much of a team effort it is. We had a big team dealing with content review. We had a team dealing with tutorial optimization. We had a team dealing with copyright issues. We had day chiefs that organized things. We had a team dealing with recruits for that. We had teams dealing with language and we had a whole technical team behind it that made all of this possible. And with this, we can present you today's tutorial. Let me introduce myself. As a scientist, I'm extremely broadly interested. I've done a lot of work on Bayesian models and you will hear about them a lot in the future. And it's an example of why models. I have also been very much interested in mechanistic models, the how models. And I've been interested in descriptive models, the what models. More broadly, I've been interested in approaches from physics and machine learning and how to apply it to brain science. Moreover, I'm very much interested in meta science. I want to understand how science as a whole works. And I'm delighted to present these tutorials for you today. Today, we will talk about three types of models. We will talk about what models. When we design what models, the objective is just to find an equation that describes the data. It doesn't come with promises on what the description would mean. It's just us trying to look at the data and trying to describe it. We will talk about how models with the idea of how does the brain make the data? The goal of how models is a mechanistic understanding. And we will talk about why models. Why is it that the brain is the way it is? Which things matter? Which things are being optimized? What's the ecological validity of our models? The goal overall, the learning objective today is that you get a feeling for these kinds of models and how they fit together and how they may fit together into the kinds of analysis that you want to run yourself. So let's dive right in. Let's talk about the first model class, the what models. What models usually start with data that we will ultimately want to describe. Today, we will be looking at the Steinmetz data set. How do things look like here? We have a rodent in this experimental setup. Around the rodent, there are screens. The rodent can also get reward. Moreover, while all that is happening, oh yeah, and the, I forgot to say, the rodent is also moving. While all that is happening, we record activity of neurons in the brain of that rodent. The, in that paper where the data set is from, they use neuropixels, which is one of these new ways how you can have one electrode that goes into the brain and you can have lots and lots and lots of small, uh, small electrical contacts along that one mechanical device. Now, what you can see on the right hand side here is the electrode in the middle. Let me highlight that. Yeah, here. Here we see the electrode. Now every row here is the activity at one channel. In first order approximation, that might be from one neuron that we have there. So what we see is while the animal is doing behavior and seeing things, we can observe the activity of a very large number of neurons. And then we can ask questions about it. Now, as we are starting to approach data analysis, let's start with the first step that we should always do for every data analysis. We want to really, really understand the data. We want to be able to know what is the data format that we are working with. What is there? Does it make sense? Do I understand the overall structure that's there? Do I understand the types of the data? Do I understand how in Python I can access the data? The very first part of this tutorial is about this understanding of the data. And a good starting point is figure out what type of data we have there. 